Kentucky to go pick up our C8 at the Corvette Museum. It's raining here, but that's not gonna stop us. So stay tuned. Okay, so we're here. Let's check out this car. So this is the C8 in white. It's probably somebody's car. All right. Okay, so we're really excited to be here. Beautiful car. Let's go get ours. <laughs> Hello. Oh wow, look at all these things. <laughs> My name's Stacy. I'll do you I'll be doing your delivery. Oh great. Okay. Nice meeting you. Victoria? Say hello, he'll be Showing you everything about the car. This is it. What do you think? Yeah. Look. Yeah. Okay. Where's the camera? Gotta be like above. Your face is the your face is this over there. Over here, Miss Victoria. Thank you, Victoria. You. First off, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Look at that. I never got anything when I bought a Corvette. <laughs> congratulations. Well, open it up and see what it says. Thank you for letting us share this great moment with you. Thank you for letting us share this great moment with you. Oh, that's very nice of you. Oh, wow. Thank you. And basically what we're going to do, we're going to send you a nameplate that's going to stick on right here. It's going to have today's date already on it. It'll have uh -huh. the VIN number of your car already on it. Okay. And then whatever you would like for it to say on the upper line, most people put their names or if they have a nickname for their car or right. whatever you'd like to say. If you could write that in for us uh, right here, that is what we will put on it. And if you'd like for it to be all caps, like this is, yeah. please do it that way, uh, or yeah. specified, or if you want it upper and lower, we're gonna do it however you put it on there. I was, I will tell you, but this is a once in a lifetime experience. But I hope you come back in a few years and do it again. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> we hope you do too. Right. So by doing this museum delivery, you get a one-year free membership to the museum. Okay. Uh, this is just some of the benefits of being a museum member so I'll okay. give that to you so every time you come here you could come here okay. ah it's really nice right mm -hmm. a lot of stuff yeah. Beautiful. Uh, also in our like Corvette store we have some special merchandise you can only get it by doing museum delivery oh okay uh, they are open for our delivery customers okay. today I'll take you back here and show you that after a while if you're interested in that yes. Okay. Uh, if you don't mind, just a little bit of information. First Corvette, 10th Corvette? Uh, about 20. 20? Yeah. Cool. I still, the one I'm keeping, I have a 1806 right now, still. And that's going to be mine. <laughs> that will always be mine. <laughs> Do you belong to any Corvette clubs or anything down in your area? I, not lately. I used to. She might join. She's going to college. 
that's part of her presence because she's mm -hmm. doing so well. All right. 4.0? 3 3.8. 3.8. I'll take wow. it. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take 3.8. So, good deal. Good deal. A couple more quick things here. Of course, here is your window sticker okay. uh, for your car. Now, if you're interested in the library and archives, which is here, um, a lot of people like to get, you know, you have your name plate out there with your name on it, and we have your window sticker. A lot of people like to get those laminated to save or hang up in the garage or in the office or dorm mm -hmm. room or whatever, saying, hey, here's my car. Mm -hmm. uh, we can do that, and if you'd like to get the build sheet for the car. Oh, okay. You can also get that here. Yeah, that's uh, beautiful. It's like 40 bucks. Yeah, okay. Uh, but we can get all that for you, too. Yeah. We'll take it home with you today Absolutely. if you're interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And you like get this laminated as well? Yes, please. Okay. That'd be nice. Take care of that. Uh, this is where your car came to us from the from the plant, and we did go through and do all the checks. We did not uh, wash the car. Okay. Uh, put any wax or anything on the car but we went through and checked and made sure everything else was working okay. everything was good to go this was in your car when it went down the production line oh, okay. designated it you know as a museum delivery car okay Excellent. really cool now inside here we have some information separate here this is just a little microfiber towel to wipe your screen and keep it clean this little brochure <laughs> here is getting to know your 2020 Corvette uh, shows you the buttons and kind of gives you a little explanation of what they do mm -hmm. now, I'm gonna go through the car with you we're gonna we're gonna spend as much time as we need getting it set up for you and getting it to fit you but this is handy to have I mean this there's a ton of stuff there's no way in the world to remember everything we're going to talk about. No, no. But this is really handy to have in a glove box, just as a refresher and go back. It's a little bit easier finding it in here than it is going all the way back through the manual. So we have that. Um, also, this is getting to know your 2020 Corvette performance features. So, you know, if you're going to take her to the track, <laughs> stuff, yeah. um, yeah. you know, when Dad's not watching, uh, <laughs> your car, but this will give you some, some points and stuff on the performance of the car. Uh, this brochure here is about your Sirius XM radio. Okay. It is on and ready to go. A lot of times it won't pick up in this building because we're under yeah. a metal roof, but you're, you're good to go. This one is about the infotainment system. This covers a ton of stuff. All about your phone, about some of the settings on the car, your navigation. Uh, it is a fully packed book. Uh, I will tell you, if you go to the GM website, you can actually register your car. But if you go on there, you can, things like your owner's manual, you can download it onto your phone, onto okay. your computer. It makes it a lot easier if you're looking for something, you just type in and it pulls it right up. And there's also some videos on there. Things like I'm going to show you today, there's videos that show you how to get around and how to do some of this stuff, okay? Which is really handy. Okie doke. Uh, this little brochure here, of course, is from Mobile One. That's what's in your car, and that's what's recommended that you uh, run in the car. Uh, it takes zero W40. Zero. Motor oil. Yes, sir. Very thin. Now that's kind of new. They started that in 2019. They used to always run 5W30. Right. But the reason they changed it is, uh, for example, a person with a Z51, like you guys, and you were going to take it to the track. Well, under the old system with the 530, they wanted you to put a heavier weight oil in the car. Right. When you got done tracking, they wanted you to change it back. Right. Okay. Now with a 0W40, you don't have to worry about that. It's good for the track. It's good for the street. It's good to go. Okay. Got that. Uh, We'll talk a little bit about the maintenance stuff on the car when we're out there looking at it. Uh, it does hold 7.5 quarts of oil, okay? And it's a little bit different now on how you check the oil and some things that you do. Uh, but we'll talk about that when we're out at the car. Uh, this is Ron Fellows Driving School. Ah, this, yes. 
uh, you have one year to use this. And we will. And basically <laughs> what you do, you go out to Spring Mountain, out close to Las Vegas, uh, make your arrangements with them. It's a two-day driving school. Uh, since you have a Z51, they're going to put you in a C8 Z51. They're going to show you all the limits of the car. They're going to teach you how to drive it, you know, high performance wise, mm -hmm. and just uh, it's a really, really neat deal. She did skip Barber. I, I, there you go. There you go. So there you go. Hopefully, uh, you won't do what you did and skip Barber. <laughs> <laughs> but this is really cool. But just yeah. just keep in mind, you have yes. up to one year to use. This, Absolutely. Okay? Absolutely. That is a great. Uh, that's great. And then also by being a uh, doing delivery, you get a one-year free membership. You'll also get a magazine from us. So. Right. This is just another subscription. If you got somebody, a friend, whatever you think might be interested, just have them fill this out, send it in, and they'll get it as well. Okay. And then of course here is your owner's manual. Uh, it is all in here. It is. You can see it is a, a lot of pages. Ooh. Again, I would download this on your yeah. computer. Floor, it yeah. makes it a lot easier. Yeah. It's all in there. And of course, your warranty manual, our booklet and stuff is in here as well. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions about your warranty or any of that, it is on your uh, window sticker here. Uh, three year, 36,000 mile bumper to bumper. Uh, five year, 60,000, you know, mileage on the uh, powertrain mm -hmm. and all that. It's, it's all here on your window sticker. So, excited? <laughs> Guys, if you, uh, like I said, our cafe is open. We can't eat in there. Right. Uh, but if you want a cup of coffee, you want yes. a soft drink, right. uh, something, okay. just okay. go in there and help yourself. There you go. Normally what we would do is uh, give you an option. Uh, of course, with all this, normally what you do, you get a tour of the plant, which right. we can't do. Can't do it, right. You get a, a tour of the museum, if you like, and I'll take you through. Uh, the museum if, if you're interested uh, go through the car uh, for sure and then of course when the day's done we're going to take some pictures and stuff you know hopefully it won't be raining so we can get some pictures outside <laughs> of the car before you guys take off in it and, uh, but the plant you'll have a rain check now it's not something i'm going to hand you but you are in our computer system right. so let's say they open it back up everything's good uh, you're coming through just give us a call say hey i'm, I'm going to be down there on such and such date can i can i set up a plant tour okay. and uh, we'll arrange to have somebody take you through okay this sheet here breaks down your vin number it tells you what all the numbers mean on your vin and this one is like i said just some good uh, reading material kind of the evolution of the, of the uh, mid-engine corvette down through the years. You know, they've been working on this since 1960. Yeah. So it's been a long time coming. <laughs> and then just some of the overview of the car, uh, yes. different items uh, that's, that's, that's about the car itself. And then there's several pages of that. About the driver's mode, uh, information. And again, we're gonna go through all this with you guys. Just the interior design, some information and stuff all about that. Yeah about the infotainment system and screens and all that. Uh, this is about the, the Chevrolet app, how all that works. And then a little bit of information about Mobile One. Like I say, that's what we recommend that you uh, run in your car. And a little bit of information about us. We are a 501c3 nonprofit. A lot of people think we're owned by GM. No. Uh, we could, couldn't be more separate. <laughs> uh, this is an American sports car magazine. The museum puts this out uh, quarterly, so you'll get this. And that little thing, uh, if you know somebody else might like to get a copy of it, they can get a copy as well. Okay. This is our Corvette store catalog. Of course, all the stuff we have in here. You buy it here, you can buy it online. Right. And you get a 10% discount okay. as long as you're a member uh, of the museum. We also own the... Motorsports Park here on the other side of the interstate. Mm -hmm. It is owned by us. Of course, it's closed right now as well. Uh, but we do a lot of stuff. We have a Carplex over there that we opened up. Uh, we got one of our new C8s. Uh, we're going to get seven, but we're going to have them over there for available for people to drive. But that's our our track. Mm -hmm. It's good enough. And of course, the museum. <laughs> we do our own insurance too uh, for classic cars, Corvettes. Uh, it's really a pretty good deal. Uh, they 
do some neat things. A lot of it's based on mileage, how you know how much you drive your car or whatever. Uh, but the good thing about it too is they do have some programs. If somebody's going to track their car a little bit or whatever, most com insurance companies will not they touch will it. Not, no, of course uh, not. They yeah. even have programs for that as well, which is good. Cool. Interesting. Good. And then this is a one-year free membership to the National Council of Corvettes. It's a big nationwide Corvette club. If you're interested, they have a lot of good information, a lot of good stuff. You can just fill this out, send it in to them, and they'll give you one of your free membership as well. So it's just for racing. Okay. Ray coolers for racing. Yep. That's after you do another two or three Skip Barber classes. <laughs> Cargo nets, and it goes here in the back, the whole small stuff, and then one goes up here in the front. Uh -huh. And there's actually a sunshade, which fastens over this. Oh, this there. Shade the inside of the car. Those so people <laughs> don't use them because I like to see the engine on Yes. And then we have this little funnel right here. Let me tell you what this is about. Mm -hmm. What this is for is your gas door right here. If your door's locked, your gas door's locked. If I unlock your door here, all you do is click it. There's no gas cap. Just put the nozzle in here, and you see this flap, and there's a second flap down inside there. So, when you go to get gas, make sure you get that nozzle all the way in there, okay. or it'll run right back out. What this is for, if you ran out of gas or something, you had to have AAA, Dad, somebody bring you gas in a can, Try to pour it in here, it's gonna run right out on the ground. <laughs> you gotta have the second, or this little nozzle to go down and open that second flap. Okay. Okay. We'll close this again. You just click it. When your door shuts, locks. Okay. No lock. Unlock. You want to open the trunk with the bob? We hit this two times. We'll open the trunk, not trunk, but trunk. Mm -hmm. And if you want to open the hatch here, you hit this okay. two times. Of course, there's a button here, a panic button. If you just forgot where you park, hit it one time, it'll flash the lights a couple times, two to more. But if you had copious people following you, or whatever, and you're not going to press it, hold it, it'll set the full alarm on. You also have a remote start. The center button, you just hit it twice. Just, uh -huh. just punch, punch. Now to shut it down, you just hit the button one time. You gotta shut down. So let's say you don't want to shut down, you just want to get in and drive the way. You can unlock the car, get in the car, you have to touch the start button on the car or let you put it in here or anything else. The other reason I want to show you here, there's four ways to get into this thing. <laughs> okay. Into the trunk. Okay? Or the hatch or the trunk. But I can hit this two times. One, two, pop. That's one. Okay? The most common and easiest way to walk get into it, just walk up to it, it's gonna unlock the button right here. Alright. Push that button, get you in. That's number two. Right. Number three, there's gonna be a button on your door where you can pop the hat or you can pop the front. And then number four. Hopefully you never have to use this. Let's say you come out to get in the car and a battery's dead in the car. The battery's dead in the bottom. You got a little button right there. It's a little tricky. You push that button, and this magic key pops out. If you wanted to get in the trunk of the car, you have to take the license plate off. But you can see right there. Yep. You stick this in here, turn it, and it will pop it. Okay. Now, if you were wanting to get in the car, let's say again, the battery's dead in the fob, or the battery's dead in the car. What you would have to do. No, I'm not going to do it. Yes. But sometime when you get a chance, get you a light, look up in here. I can feel it with my finger. Up it, it's up. Actually, over here. 
but there's a slot up there. You push that in and then pull down on it and it will pop the door open. Okay? okay. This is your antifreeze. This is where you add your oil. And of course, here's the dipstick. Now, checking the oil in this car is a little different than anything else you've done. You, when the car's cold, you go out and pull the dipstick, you wipe it off, you check it, and you're good, right? Not this this one. one, you need to crank the car up. Let it warm up, the oil temp warm up to at least uh, 270, and leave it running. You check the oil in this thing with it running. Dry sump. Dry sump. Yeah. If a lot of the maintenance and stuff on this is hard to get to anymore, just like changing the air filter, yeah. you have to take this out, underneath this out, just to get to the air filter. This, of course, there's three this radiators on this thing. There's one on each front corner of the car, and then there's one right here. Yeah. Air okay. So far from what we've seen, it does an excellent job of keeping these things cool. Really, really good. There's a lot of oil coolers, transmission coolers, rear end coolers. Uh, they are all supplied by this water system as well, which is really good. <laughs> really, really good. We have a trunk. Now, you can either, either take the key, hit this twice, or my, see right here where my fingers are? Stick your uh, fingers in right there. Push it. Uh, there you go. There you go. Lift it up. And there's another storage trunk. Luggage compartment. Wow. It's deep. It is deep. Now, a few deep. things while we're in here. This is where you fill your windshield washer. This smells fresh. This is your brake fluid. Brake fluid, okay. Now, you can't see it because it's covered, but there's another reservoir right here that takes brake fluid as well. The OT4, just like the brake, that is for the lift system. Oh, yes. Okay. Probably that's right. You got a lift on this. It's not something you need to check very often or whatever. Your battery also is set right here. <laughs> if you never needed to get in here, it's kind of a pain. But what you have to do, you have this little piece right here on the side kind of goes back up here. You have to snap that out. Snap that side out. And this whole piece right here. Snap. Really? And then you can get to the battery and all those things. Battery is pre-wired for a battery tender. Battery tender? Now if you're gonna park this thing for more than two, three weeks at a time, you need to plug it up. Yes. Just passing information all the time. Now to close this thing, it's a little different. It's a two-step process. It's got one step, if you push it, click, you heard it. Then it's got a second step. Push it, click. That's how you close it. While we're here, I will show you. This is your left-hand parking camera and your right-hand parking camera over here. Your car has the lift system. Raise up two inches, and you can program it to save. Say every time you pull in your driveway, yeah. you pull up to it, uh, uh, bring up the lift system, save it. The next time, you don't have to do it. You do it automatically. You can save up to a thousand places. And I asked the question to one of the engineers. Say you got a speed bump coming east to west. Set it to raise. But when you're coming west to east, you have to set it in. The answer is no. And it looks at it, it kind of throws like a folded blanket over that whole speed knob or area. It's going to pick it up no matter what. Yeah. Ah, right. oh, smart. The caveat is you got to be going less than 24 miles an hour. Okay. Of course, you don't hit no speed bump going faster than that. Anyway. Oh, I like it. Oh, you love, <laughs> I love it. it. This car, of course, anytime you put your foot on the brake and you touch the start button, which is right there, it's going to fire right there. Now, without your foot on the brake, if you just touch that start button one time and let go, we can do that. Okay, this is accessory mode. Uh -huh. So we could play the radio, 
We can let the windows up and down. We can do a few things, uh, just like any other car, an accessory. But it will not let you change some of the settings. But it will let us save your seat and your steering wheel. So we're gonna do that. You got three buttons right here. Right here on the side. You got a big round button. We'll come back to that one. You got this one here in the center, which will take you forward and backwards. And if you pull up on the front, it will raise the front or raise the back. So if you need to be taller, you gotta yeah. kind of seesaw it up. Okay. And then this button here will move your back. Right. forward, back, and then I'll tell you what these other two do. So go ahead and play with those and get up there where you can reach the pedals and everything. Very <laughs> close. <laughs> Yeah. It's gonna just, it's close. <laughs> Is the back good? Yeah, the back good. good. It's tilts and telescopic all by this one back here. So go ahead and play with that. And get it to where it feels pretty good. And again, it's hard to do sitting in here. You'll have to kind of get used to driving. Yeah. What we're gonna do, we're gonna shut your doors. I'm gonna have you sit here in the mirrors. Okay? Because we're gonna stay on. So your mirrors are here. So if you want to set this one, touch that, and then left, right, up, and down. And actually, these fobs, the best thing to do is carry in your pocket, carry in your purse. Or if you open this box right here, if you put it in the back, very back cup holder, there's actually a sensor in there that knows it's in there and knows what fob that is. So if you ever get in a car and it says can't detect the fob for whatever reason, the battery low in the fob, whatever, set that in that cup holder and it will pick it up automatically. Now what we're going to do, we have your seat kind of set, we're going to test it. So I want you to open your door, button right there. Stay there. <laughs> Now, your seat didn't go back because we still have the power on. So, touch the button and turn the power off. And it's going to go back. It did a little Power bit. button go off. Is it still lit up? It's still on. It's on. There, there we you go. go. There we go. Oh, now, wow. That's really I cool. I have it set to go all the way back. Yeah. Steering wheel to go all the way <laughs> up. Now, you may not want that much mm -hmm. travel. You just want it to get you back out of the way yeah. where you can get in and out of the car. So if you if you want it in a different position, you set it where you want it, and then you hold set, set, and then the exit position, okay. and that's where it will go to. All right. Okay. The number two position would be tied to the second fob okay. that I have in my pocket. And also on the dry on the passenger seat, they can save their settings. Whoever's over there can save their settings as well. Uh -huh. But again, it's tied to a key fob. Okay? Now, when you get in the car, you say, well, I'm like, you know, I'm kind of short. I get in, I can't, it's hard to reach yeah. the <laughs> pedal. So if you're getting in, let's just say, you get in, you shut the door. Well, if you start the car, it's gonna go to your position, but it's kind of hard to reach, right? Yeah. So just touch the start button one time and let go. Put it in accessory, okay? And then hold the one. Hold the number one position till you get there. All right. <laughs> and then you can start the car and drive away, whatever you like to do. Long way to go. <laughs> or if you just let it up far enough that you can reach the yeah. brake pedal or uh, push the brake pedal, mm -hmm. start it up, and it'll finish itself on its own. Right. Make sense? Yeah. Here on the door before we leave it. See down here? That button there opens the front. Push it one time, opens the front. Button back here, push it one time, opens the back. Of course, your button to get in and out is here. And your lock and unlock. Now, you can use these if you want to, but you know it's going to do it automatically, or you can use the fob, or you can use these. Either way. 
showed you how to set your seat here. Of course, your windows up and down here. And now, let's start the car. Let me show you a few things here. This button right here is your parking brake. Go ahead and push it, and it will tell you parking brake is on. If you want to release it, push it and see what it tells you. You gotta have your foot on the brake. Go ahead and put your foot on the brake. Hit the lower one. The second button right here. Uh, go ahead and grasp it and turn it to the left. Keep going. It will dim your dash lights. Oh, okay. All the way down to what's called stealth mode. Right. Where it shows you just barely. It, it won't go all the way out when it's dark because it wants you to see, but it's called stealth. <laughs> and if you turn it back to the right, of course it will start brightening everything back. Okay. Buttons right here, you got three of them. If you look through your windshield, you should see a heads up display. The second button right here, there's like four different views you can have to do that. So go ahead and just toggle and you'll see that we're watching change. So it just depends on what you want to see right there in your heads up display. Okay. And the third button makes it brighter or dimmer. Now let's say at night, sometimes it bothers people at night, especially with certain sun yeah. or glasses on. If you don't want to see it at night or you just want to get rid of it for a little bit, you can dim it until it's all the way dim and you don't see it no more. This right here is your cruise control. You turn it on, you push that button, wouldn't do it. You'll see it come up there and then you can set, you can resume, uh, you can pause, uh, all those same things. You can go up and down, you know, move at one mile an hour, or two miles an hour, or you can just turn it back. These are your paddle shifters. And again, they pull to you. If you're driving in drive mode, you don't have to use paddle shifters. It will shift on its own automatically every time. If you wanted to use them just for fun, you can. It's not going to let you do something silly, it just the computer will not allow it. Uh, but you can still shift up and down. If you shift it down and don't shift back up, it's going to shift back up on its own. <laughs> okay. If you're driving in manual mode, which is the M, it's going to expect you to shift. Okay? It's going to expect you to shift up, it's going to expect you to shift down. This little button right here, that is your heated steering wheel. Push that, steering wheel will heat up. This is the voice activation button. So if I hit that button, the car's gonna ask me what I wanna do. I can say, find me 60's oldie station. Boom, gonna do it. I can say, call, call dad, call somebody. It's gonna do it once we get your phone set up. We're gonna right. do that here in a little bit. I can say navigation and say, hey, I need directions how to get to yada, yada, yada. It, it, it can, you can do a lot of things with my voice. This one ends a voice activation. We'll mute the radio, ends a call, or just ends something that you don't want to do anymore. Okay? Now, if we look at your dash here, let's talk a little bit. I'll try to tell you the break in maintenance figure. There is a thousand ways we can set this dash up on that. I can't tell you how you're going to want it, but I'm going to show you how to do it here. But if you look right now, you'll see the red line on the tachometer starts at 4,000 RPMs. For well, the first 500 miles, they recommend you not get this car over that 4,000 RPM threshold. Can you? Uh, yes, you can. But they recommend you don't. You shouldn't. Also, for the first 500 miles, you're going to be limited in power and torque in the first four years. When you hit 500 miles, that's all going to change. Red line is going to go to 6,500 RPMs. That power loss that you had is going to come back and it's going to be all normal. Okay? okay? Nothing you have to do. When you hit that threshold, it's just going to automatically change. 
Now, also for the first 500 miles, the worst thing you could do on this car is get out on the interstate, set the cruise control, and cruise at one speed. Yeah. Uh, run faster, you need to run slower. You need to run RPMs a little lower, run RPMs a little higher. Do it by shift paddle shift. Oh, you constantly. Okay. But you know, every few miles, change it up, change pull it off, up. get off the interstate if you're on the interstate, drive through, let it go through some heat cycles up and down until you hit that 500 mile mark, then you're good to go. Brakes are good. There's nothing really you have to do. Just try not to have to stab them. Try right. not to do jackrabbit start and stuff for the first 500 miles. Is there an oil change required at the 500? There is not. No. There is not. Your first oil change is due basically by your oil monitoring system. Right. Uh, when it gets down to about 20%, and then you can start thinking about an old change. Because on the older ones, on, yeah, on, on old dry sumps, yeah, yeah. yeah. But okay. this one, but, okay. not necessarily. Okay. All the way through. Now, this one, be careful. If you read in the manual, it says press that button. I'm going to show you something. Ooh. That will hurt you. Always hold on to the back of it, push the button, ease it down. <laughs> okay, now what we got up here, we got a pin on my side going down, one on your side going down. Back here in the back, we got pins going in. So to lift it off, we need to lift it up, out, okay, and to put it in, we need to go in and then down. So hop out, and we're going to take it off. Underneath? Underneath here, yeah. but not a lot. Well, let's get back in there and let me show you a bunch more stuff. The glove box. Push the button. Pretty small. There's a USB port here. Are you familiar with Apple CarPlay? Because yeah. you'll have to plug up to yeah. that. And right here is a phone charger. All you do is slide your phone in here and it will. Do you know which, which version of the iPhone? Because sometimes it's like a specific one. Uh, I do not. Mm -hmm. Could I have it? I would not. No, because, yeah, like, I only like have the older ones, so sometimes I'll be like the new one. Yeah. You're going to have to get a new one. Well, if you got an older one or whatever, if you plug yeah. it in here with the cable, it will charge the phone too. Yeah. This is just a wireless. Mm -hmm. uh, but like I say, if you're going to use Apple CarPlay or stuff like that, you got to be plugged yeah. Now, it won't charge or do any of that unless the car is running. So let's, uh, while we're sitting here, you can see all these buttons here. The best thing I can tell you about that is you're just going to have to get used to what they are yeah. and I can show you how to pull this up on the screen too you don't even have to look at these but let me kind of explain what they do this first one is your temperature you got dual zones with your climate control so if you got it climate control if this is on 70 you need to be warmer you just go up 72 74 up or down this is going to change yours this button right here is your heated seat okay it's got three settings, on, off, or on, high, low, medium. This is your cooling seat. Push that, the fan will come on and blow air. Sink, that's like if you want both sides of this to be the same, you put it in the sink, do the same. When you adjust yours, you adjust this. Uh, auto, most of the time that's where you can run. Uh, for the climate control to work. Uh, of course, here, you can do it manually. You have the air coming out the bottom, the top, the bottom, windshield, fan speed, higher or lower. This is all from me. Uh, you can turn the turn it on or off. Use the AC manual, research. 
defroster, and I actually have these set to come on automatically. If they need to come on automatically, they'll come on automatically. And then here's my seat. Heated seat, uh, cooling seat, and my temperature fuel pressure pump. So that's all of them. Your car does have the performance data recorder. Oh, it does. I'll put your card in here. Your card goes right here in this little slot right here. And I'll show you how that works. I'll put you a 16 gig card. Uh, one thing I do need to show you here, of course, your OnStar is here. We need to set your OnStar up before you pull it out of here today. Hazard flashers, I told you, is there. I told you your car has a passive lock in there. So we'll say you and I are, are driving and we're, you need to run in the post office. And I'm here with you. So you get out and walk away with the fob to go in the post office and I'm sitting in the car. If I move, the alarm's gonna go. This button right here temporarily, temporarily disables the alarm system. You can see it's the lips, and it will actually tell you. Uh, that temporarily disables it. Now you can turn it back on and enable it, or if you recrank the car, it's going to run a second. Okay? But it used to be down on the lower left, and now it's right here. Okay, let's talk about gears. It's all push buttons. But it's actually electric, electronic. It makes you feel like you're doing something mechanical, okay. but you're actually not. Well, you are pulling the button. But you've got park, of course, pull up for reverse, push in for neutral, pull up for drive, and then game. The only thing about manual mode, it's going to expect you to shoot. Will it, if it hits the red line, will it shift or it won't? Will it override it? It's not going to let you do something way off. Oh, so it will. It's idiot proof. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll play with this here. These buttons right here. This button right here is your traction control. Now, unless you were going to race this car, racing it, you can hit this twice and turn traction control off. Okay. So if you want to do a burnout, you can. Otherwise, the car's not going to happen. But this is more for racing. The second button here in the center, I'll show you. But if you pull up to a speed bump or something in the road, if you hit that, it'll raise the car two inches. And it's going to ask you if you want to save that. We'll play with that here in a minute. And then this button over here is the front cameras. Once we have our power on, we push it. Okay. And again, we're going to play with this more. I just want to show you up front. This right here changes your drive settings. Okay. You've got weather, you've got a thing called my mode, which you can set it up to how you want it. You've got tour mode, you've got sports mode, you've got track mode, and you've got a thing called Z mode. You can set that up to your settings, but it's more like we're driving on a nice windy road that you like or a track or something. Mm. But I'll show you. Nice. Okay, now there's a lot. There's a ton. So let's start the car back up. Oh, okay. Let's talk about these buttons right here. We are in tour mode. Okay? And actually, let's talk about that first. The change drive mode setting. You actually grasp this. You can move it left or right and change it. Now, see where we're in park. You see down below that. Go ahead and grasp this and go to the left. Oh. All the way to the left. Do it again. Now, what's it's the same in there? We're in weather mode. Okay. Now, what weather mode means is all the computer systems on this car are height. Your throttle is a little bit slower. Your brake is a little bit slower. Traction is height. More so. Stability is height. So if you're on a wet road, slick road, whatever, it helps you think big time. And you can change these modes at any time. Set steel to 5 miles an hour, 105 miles an hour. It makes no difference. So that is weather mode. That's the one closer to the left. Grasp it, cover the right one time and go. This is called mind mode. This is where we can set it up for you. Cover the right, let go. This is tour mode. Tour mode is the steering's gonna feel and be normal. 
brakes, normal. Throttle, normal. Uh, suspension, normal. It's just like touring, cruising down the power. Got the bike and let go. Sport, we heard the exhaust valve open. We saw the tachometer change. The steering's gonna feel different. It's gonna be tighter. Throttle response is gonna be a little snappier, a little quicker. Brakes are gonna be a little quicker to respond. You just gained about five horsepower. Okay, right. And your suspension is gonna get stiff. Stiff, yeah. Go to the right again. You're gonna see the tachometer change. This is track mode. Now, I will tell you, track mode is for the track. Yeah. Suspension gets extremely stiff. Steering gets stiff. Very stiff. Uh, a lot of things are going to feel different. Uh, but the worst thing, not worst, but the, the biggest thing you have to watch out for is the suspension. Because it gets extremely stiff. If you hit a big old hot hole in track mode, you can do some damage. Wow. Track mode is actually for the track. Track. That way there are no bottles. Okay. Right. Okay. So what I want you to do now is go back to the tour mode. Do I might have to be close? Yeah. Now, this other button right here is front camera. Go ahead and push that. And it brings up the front camera. We got three views. We got a view all the way across the front of the car that we can see. We got a little left-hand corner view. And we got a little right-hand corner view. And there are sensors and stuff now in there that will tell you if something's there and you're getting close to it. So you know everything about the car now? to know I can ask you about the car you tell me
take some pictures here in front of this mural. That's all right. And this right here, I'm just going to hit stop recording.